Hi, my name is Ellen and I help clients automate their business systems using all sorts of awesome software. And today I wanted to share one of my favorite and free tools for creating registration forms. For this example, I've set up a template featuring a mountain bike summer camp and you'll be able to use this form as a guide to set up your own registration system for your workshops, clinics, training sessions, or classes. Just change the details for your event as needed. So let's get started. First, you'll need a PayPal account. Set that up for free using um, the email address where you'd like to collect the payments. And you can set up either a business or a personal PayPal account. Either one will work fine. And then you'll want to create a free JotForm account. And the setup for that is pretty straightforward. And so once you've got your account set up, what you'll want to do is you'll want to click on this Create Form button up, up at the top left side of the screen. And then for this example, we'll click Import Form. And we'll say From Web Page. And then I will share this URL with you that you paste in and hit continue. And what it will do is it will create my form template directly in your JotForm account. So then once you've got this form in here, you can go through and edit so that it makes sense for your event. And over here on the left, we've got all these different form fields that you can just grab and drag over here into your own form so you can kind of customize this however you want. Drag things in or click the red X to delete them out. And just all these elements, you can either click on them to edit, um, edit as needed, or you can click the red X to remove them completely out of your form. The gear icon gives you all these other kind of editing properties. So if you want to do different things with the formatting or the centering or however you want, you can kind of poke around and see all those options there. And um, so then a few things that we want to make note of, I would leave this mobile responsive widget here. And that what that does is that will resize the form beautifully so it'll look great on mobile devices. So that's pretty important. The next thing that's pretty important is going down here, the PayPal payment area. So what you can do is you can click on this little wizard magic um, wand logo here and then just kind of follow these steps. What you'll do is you'll paste in your PayPal email address here and then you'll just follow the instructions and um, kind of go through these options and you can add new products or when you click on something you can change the name and the price things like that you can add an image if you have that hit save and just kind of follow the prompts for all these options as you go through here and click finish I have found that from time to time when duplicating forms this PayPal element gets kind of jammed up and doesn't work right so if you can do that little wizard and follow the instructions and it looks like it's good for you awesome but if you're having problems with that what you'll want to do is you'll want to delete this PayPal area um, option here hit the red X delete it out and then grab this PayPal option here drag it back into the form and reset it up with all your own new information so just be aware of that that that's kind of um, an area that the system can get kind of tripped up the next thing this is totally optional for you, but I created this little image that explains that on the next page, you can click this link here down below to pay with a debit or credit card. Um, people sometimes get confused when they get to this step that they don't have a PayPal account or don't know what their PayPal login info is, and then they freak out. So um, I just tried to make it as clear as possible for people who may just want to pay with a credit card, which is most probably most of your consumers. So this could help, but it's not necessary to keep that in there. It's just one, one stumbling block that I found with people. So then we are going to go up to the top here and click Setup and Embed. Oh, and then there, another thing, when you're designing your form, click on Designer or Themes, and you can adjust the colors and fonts. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. So. Um, you know, keep those in mind to fine tune it so it matches your branding. But now we're going to look at the emails, thank you, and publish. So when we click on emails, this is where we can set up a number of email messages. And this is pretty important and helpful. So I like to create a welcome email to the customer. So to go in and you can kind of um, 
edit these notifications however you like, whatever kind of message you'd like to put in here. And you can um, just go through all these tabs to see the various options and test the email, of course. Um, do that and then save. And then I also like to create a email alert for um, myself or the internal staff who's ever going to be receiving kind of the money and keeping track of the registration roster. So I like to just create an alert to myself as well that says another registration came in and just, you know, to just to kind of be aware of that information. And let's see here. Then the next thing we want to go back to the setup and embed and then to thank you. So once the form is completed successfully, we want to show some sort of thank you page. So there's a, just a default thank you page that you can go in here and click and type and edit this however you like. Or um, if you're able, and I do suggest this when you're at the point that you've got a website and can create a special page for it, to create a thank you page on your website that just says, uh, you know, thank you and check your email for the next steps or something like that. So then you can paste that link in there then people will end up directly at your website on the thank you page, but it's not critical. So if you don't have the website set up yet, just use this default thank you page. We'll save that. And then go back to the setup and embed tab and now over to publish. This is where you get your link for the form. So this is the link that you can copy and paste and send by email to all of your prospects or add to an email newsletter or share on social media, wherever you want. So um, we'll copy and take a quick peek at what that looks like. This is just the form that I showed you at the beginning. This is how it looks. Um, that's how, where you um, get the link there. Or you can click over here on embed and get the embed code and give that to your web person so that they can add the link or add the form rather directly into your website. And then before you click this publish and share the link or embed into your website, be sure to test this. So use this, give this code um, for this page right here to a friend, maybe a few friends, have them go through the process as if they were registering themselves and make sure that the form makes sense, that all your questions make sense, that the payment situation goes through properly and that your emails come back the way you want them to. And a lot of times for the test, I'll adjust the price down to $1 just so that it's, you know, something um, affordable and quick to test that out. And then you can refund your friends um, by PayPal after they're done testing. But um, just, just be sure to do, a lot, do the testing before you share with too many people. And then another thing I want to point out is the integrations. When you click on that, I like to link up the form to Google Spreadsheets. So if you just click on that and hit Authenticate, It'll ask you which, um, which of your Google accounts you'd like to link it up with. And then all of your data will go right into a Google form that you can share with your other staff members or people who might not need access to your JotForm account, but who could be helping manage the event. And then a couple other things. If we go back to My Forms and you hover over your form name and then go to More and uh, Clone, you can make a copy of your form so that the next time, so it says clone up here, and you can just rename that for, let's see here, we're going to pretend that we're doing mountain bike camp number two, put in whatever, I don't remember what the dates are, so we're going to put in the dates up there, and then you just go down through and make some quick edits to say this is for camp two, we're going to change the dates here. And, you know, most of your information are, probably is oftentimes the same for events, so it makes it really quick for you to duplicate the whole process for your next event. Also, the forms are usually doing an autosave, but I like to just double check that if that little save icon is um, dark, you can hit it and it'll save for you. And then when you get close to uh, the deadline for your event and you want to turn the form off so nobody else can register, select the form over here, hit more, and then disable. And that will turn it off so nobody else can register. So again, here's a kind of a picture of what the form can look like. As soon as people fill it out, they'll be taken to the, pay the payment page that so looks kind of like this. And then they'll receive the confirmation email in their inbox. So I hope this process helps you set up a form for your next event. And good luck.